Hi, my name's Christian, and today we're going to talk about something you may have already experienced, and that's how sometimes it is hard to love others. We can experience this when people are mean to us, or dismiss us, or maybe force their opinion on us, even if it's something we don't agree with. For example, maybe a crowd at school wants you to do something that you don't quite want to do. In today's God story, we're going to learn how to love others, even when it's hard. Watch this. Knock, knock. Peep, peep. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy again. Good to be with you. I want to tell you a story about um, a really difficult and kind of bad attitude conversation that I had with somebody. I'm a pastor, and being a pastor, oftentimes I get to do weddings. And so I did this one wedding. It was a beautiful wedding at a golf course. And then my wife and I attended the reception, and we sat with this one dude who kept like eyeing me up, like kind of giving me the stink eye. And he was just like, so you're a pastor? And I was like, yeah, I'm a pastor. And he's like, that's so dumb. And I remember thinking like, that escalated quickly. And so as we began to chat, he began to soften a little bit, but the beginning of the dinner started super, super awkwardly with him saying that my life's calling was dumb. And that leads us to today's big idea, which is that Jesus shows us how to love others even when it's hard. So we want to pick it up in uh, Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 9, and this is what it says. So don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Okay, so we've all experienced this. A lot of times it can just be easier to, to pretend, to, to fake it, but God actually wants us to engage in genuine affection for the people that we interact with every single day. So let's keep reading. We're gonna pick it up in verse 11 now. And we're gonna read a lot, so buckle up. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of just ordinary people and don't think that you know it all. If your enemies are hungry, he says, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. So don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Okay, so tons of stuff going on there. And so Paul is writing to a very specific group of people. And he says, whoa, 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 whoa. Be in the posture of like peace, of blessing, of praying. Of, of asking God to partner with you and actually do good, enjoy doing good. And then he goes back and he actually, he quotes a, a proverb from the Old Testament. And he says, by doing so, you heap coals of shame on their head. Now, obviously neither of us should be like grabbing coals out of the fire and throwing them at our friends. It's not the point here. What he's saying is there's this purging process that happens when we genuinely engage in loving affection and other centeredness for other people that we exist with, whether it be our friends or family or people that we like like don't really like at school or at work or wherever it is. So you remember my friend from the wedding, the guy that after the ceremony, I sat down at the reception, the party table. It would have been very easy for me to slip out of the conversation or for me to argue with him or for me to just like fake genuine interest in what he was saying and maybe mock him a little bit too. I didn't choose to do any of those things. I chose to engage with him, to, to listen, to hear his story, and to actually pay attention to who he was and what he was saying. This is the big idea that we love even when it's difficult, that we choose to love people even when it's hard. The promise of scripture and with what Paul says is that we're not alone. We don't have to do this alone. We have the Spirit of God living within us, and then we also have our brothers and sisters around us to help support each other. And so again, we love even when it's hard. And that's the big idea for today, that Jesus shows us how to love others even when it's hard. So it's been great being with you today. It's Jimmy, your boy again. We'll see you next time. Peace. 
We can ask God to show us how to love like Jesus loves, and we can reach out to family and friends for advice on how to practically show love to others. Showing love can sometimes be hard because of many different reasons. We may live far from someone, or we may find it hard to find time in our schedule to reach out and support others. Let's check out this story to see how some people go out of their way to show love to others. Watch this. Hey friends, I'm Dan, and I'm here with my friend Willem, and today we're talking about how Jesus asks us to love others even when that's a difficult thing to do, and Willem actually has a story about that to share with us. Yeah, definitely. A few years ago, I had some neighbors who were not super nice people. Mm. They were pretty grouchy, they made a lot of noise, and they didn't really seem to care about anyone else in the neighborhood. Um, but one winter, we had a ton of snow overnight. I think it was a couple feet of snow. Oh, wow. But luckily, I didn't have to go anywhere the next day, so I could sleep in. So I woke up, I made myself a mug of hot chocolate, and nice. I was still in my pajamas, and I went to the window to kind of see the winter wonderland. And down on the street, I saw my neighbors in their car, stuck on the road, trying to get out. So then I kind of had a choice to make. Mm -hmm. It would have been really easy for me just to kind of turn around and walk away, and I was comfortable, I had my hot chocolate, I was warm, and it was cold and snowy outside. But in the end, I put that stuff away, and I got dressed, and I grabbed my shovel. I went down to the road, and I helped get them out, and they were on their way. Wow, that's so kind of you. Did things change between you and your neighbors after that? Not really. They were still pretty grouchy. Mm. They still made a lot of noise. Mm. But I knew, you know, after I did that, that I had done the right thing, and I was showing them love like Jesus tries to tell us to show them love. Yeah, absolutely. What are some examples, do you think, of Jesus showing love to others when it was difficult? Oh, man. I feel like the Bible's full of them. Yeah. One that comes to mind is it says that Jesus wanted to get away. Mm. I figure he's been around people for so long, talking to people, saying these incredible things that he just needed some alone time. Yeah. So it says that he, he got on a boat and set sail across the sea but by the time he got to the other shore, it says that there was a crowd of people waiting there, excited to see him and ready to hear the things he had to say. And I think Jesus had a choice there as well, because I think it would have been easy for him to turn his boat around and go somewhere else Absolutely. and just leave those people. But instead, even though he wanted that alone time, he went to shore and he met with those people and he talked to them and he shared the good things that he had to say. Yeah, it's such an incredible example for us, and we actually have another story to share with you. Some junior high leaders decided to do some really nice things for the students in their group. We're gonna watch that story now. I'm James. I'm Virginia. We're the Fletchers. We're small group leaders at the Meeting House Oakville. And during this season, we've been uh, able to stay in touch with our students um, remotely, but what we're doing right now is spending time going out to see each of them at their homes and doing porch visits, just to let them know that during this tough time, we still think about them, we still pray for them, we still love them, and they're a part of our community. So we're doing that by showing them uh, ourselves present with them and then providing them a little gift on behalf of the youth group. It was great to see all the youth one-on-one -on -one, and we haven't seen them since last year. And we dropped off these gift bags and you know, it has a pop, a candy, some chocolate bar, and a fidget popper, I think they're called. And there's also a encouragement note that's already got a stamp on it. So we encourage them to write a note to someone else in the youth group that they haven't seen in a while. Just note some encouragement and it'll be a surprise to get some snail mail in the mail. We all experience really hard times in our life, and it's at those times when you want to feel like you're part of community. And the Meeting House is that, and the youth group is that. And we're able to go around and visit our students and let them know that even in these hard times, they're loved, they're cared for, they're part of a bigger family that has their back. Wow, what an incredible story. Yeah, it was really cool to see the leaders come up with a really creative solution to find a way to reach out to the youth to kind of find a way to connect and make sure that they were doing okay during these really 
hard times. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's cool is they didn't feel the need to do something elaborate or big. I think oftentimes when we think of doing nice things for people, it can look like some elaborate gesture or some expensive gift. But they recognized that just showing up and being present when that was a difficult thing to do said a million words to these students. Um, and what a great example for us. Let's figure out ways to be creative and love others when that's a hard thing to do. Wow, I love that the Fletchers delivered the care packages even when it was super cold. That in and of itself shows that they really care. And the care packages were simple. They weren't super expensive and just a very nice reminder to the youth that they're loved. Let's break into our small groups and see how this looks in our own lives. <laughs> 